Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And it is an honor to, uh, to stand at this House and to speak to S6 and act to implement the convention between Canada and the Republic of Madagascar for the avoidance of double taxation, the prevention of fiscal evasion with respect to taxes on income. Now, it has been said that this is the 94th uh, agreement of this type, uh, and, and it deals specifically about uh, tax evasion. Interestingly, uh, Mr. Speaker, in preparation for this uh, debate, that um, I uh, did some research and homework on uh, Canada and Madagascar, uh, our, our relations. It dates back to 1965, as a matter of fact, uh, Madam, or Mr. Speaker, and uh, it was uh, where we established uh, diplomatic ties with Madagascar in 1965. And, uh, and and uh, the latest uh, data and stats on our two-way merchandise trade between Canada and Madagascar total 115.5 million dollars. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, ent I enter that into this debate because uh, the, our honourable parliamentary secretary uh, mentioned that uh, very often that uh, tax treaties are seen as uh, a way to break down the barriers to trade. And uh, um, uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I, I think that that is something that is uh, of importance. I, I do also want to thank my honourable colleague who. Um, who uh, welcomed me and hosted me uh, as we uh, as we toured the uh, the Davy shipyards and uh, Mr. Speaker, I have to tell you the day that we were there and the the pride that was seen by the hundreds of workers uh, in the uh, uh, in 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 the product that they put forth, the pride of our navy, the Asterix uh, ship that is um, that uh, is uh, really. Um, uh, well, as I said, it is, uh, it is a pride of our Navy. Uh, our honourable colleague also touched on um, my file. The, uh, uh, I am the Shadow Minister for the uh, Fisheries, Oceans, Canadian Coast Guard. Mr. Speaker, did you know that Canada uh, has the longest uh, coastline in the world? We have the longest coastline in the world, yet we have the oldest marine fleet. Uh, to uh, well, to patrol that, to protect our sovereignty, to ensure that the coastal communities that d depend uh, on well our waterways and th that our waterways are remain open and free, and and uh, that transportation can and and uh, transportation of, of goods and people can flow freely, uh, and that our trade uh, can take place, that our waterways are safe. Uh, that that's what the brave men and women of our Canadian Coast Guard they do every day, and it should never be forgotten their service to our country. Mr. Speaker, it is shameful that we we see a government that makes a lot of promises, uh, a lot of promises like to stand in this house and indeed on stages right across our country uh, with their hand on their heart and talk about their most important relationships. Well, I think I don't know what number they're at now in terms of most important relationships, but it's. There's a lot, uh, Mr. Speaker, and, and that's why we're here again today talking about a relationship between Canada and, and Madagascar. I want to talk about most important relationships, and I, I want to go back to, because I, it was our honourable colleague brought this up, um, the brave men and women that serve our Canadian Coast Guard. Mr. Speaker, we need to make sure that, just as I do, uh, that, that we outfit our men and women who serve, whether it's a first responder or a military, our Co Canadian Coast Guard need to make sure that they have the equipment that they need to be able to fulfill their jobs. And we've seen this government has not done that. They talk a good game, but they have failed in doing so. We've had the department appear before committee a number of times, and uh, yet they failed to give us uh, uh, any time of uh, a schedule or where they're going to pr proceed with procurement of, of uh, well, new vessels to make sure that our waterways remain free, that we, in, uh, God forbid, that we have an incident up in the Arctic where we have to, you know, save, you know, a ship that could be trapped or, uh, heaven forbid, even in, in worse uh, conditions. Mr. Speaker, it leads me to uh, uh, another part of what we are, why we're here today. We're talking about uh, tax evasion and, and the estimated $47 billion annually that is, uh, that is lost to our economy. I want to talk about our economy. Because not only are we losing uh, estimated $47 billion of, of, of dollars uh, annually, um, but investment in our country, uh, in, in business, is fleeing our country at record levels. Uh, you know, uh, Mr. Speaker, that it is, uh, uh, the, the, the levels are, are astronomical right now. They're at 70-year highs in terms of investment fleeing. We have tax evasion 
and we have business investment fleeing at record levels. Why is that? Mr. Speaker. Well, it's because of the policies and the inconsistent messages that this government has actually delivered in the short term that they've been there. Short term, but it's been. Well, I would argue, argue that uh, it has been a long three and a half years. It feels very long. And we have businesses every day that appear before us. They come into our offices, they talk to us, they talk about how concerned they are. No different than our constituents that come to us when we have a riding breaks. Mr. Speaker, which brings me to uh, the experience that I had last week where I had a, an accountant in my riding that was talking about well, mining and exploration credits uh, for, uh, for upstart uh, businesses and, and how this government is now, and CRA has now made this and deemed this as uh, assistance. And so now these uh, companies have to claim this as income. And, and another barrier, when we're talking about breaking barriers uh, for trade, we need to, to do whatever we can to break the barrier for investment and for businesses. You know, they like to talk about how many jobs that they created. Well, Mr. Speaker, here's a news flash. Governments don't create uh, jobs. Their job is to create the environment so that businesses can invest and so that businesses create jobs. Mr. Speaker, we know that the numbers are, are staggering. You know, it, it was just recently reported that nowhere, nowhere ever before has a government ever spent so much and received so little. You know, boasted so loudly, I believe, and spent so much to achieve so level or so little. You know, we know that the Prime Minister in, in well, that time, the member for Papineau in, in, the, in the 2015 campaign, made a lot of promises. Promised to be different. I think he promised real change. I think that was the title that he said. You know, he promised that there wouldn't be ominous bills. He promised that he wouldn't sneak things into these big ominous bills. Well, What's the, you know, what's the going, uh, you know, the, the, the headlines lately is what we saw in a Budget Implementation Act. Well, there's a little clause that was snuck in, uh, you know, to do with something that, you know, justice clause really is something to do a legal term and a legal issue that they snuck in a Budget Implement Implementation Act. Mr. Speaker, some could argue that that was fairly sneaky and underhanded. Why was it in there and not uh, where it should have been? And why isn't the, the former Attorney General actually putting that forward if that was something that they wanted to sneak in? So the concerns that, you know, that others along on this side of the House have had with respect to this, we, well, we, we support this and we support that we see the, the importance of breaking down the barriers to trade and making sure that, well, that, that, that flow of tax evasion or dollars from, uh, uh, related to tax evasion is stemmed um, uh, and that we're, 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 create, we're breaking down the barriers for trade, that we are making sure that the, you know, the legislation that's coming before this House, that we have fulsome debate, that we are able to, well, as the 338 members of Parliament that were elected to actually be the voices of the electors, Canadians that elected all of us, that we all have a say in that, uh, in that those pieces of legislation. Uh, Mr. Speaker, you know, they, the Prime Minister campaigned on being open and transparent. What, what, what we've seen is that they tell us just to trust them that when it gets to committee that we'll have that fulsome debate. Well, we also know that the Liberal majority uh, uh, committees actually shut down that debate and it, the, the, the conversation is very one-sided. As, mu as much as they like to talk about how it is uh, uh, very collaborative. Um, uh, I, I do say that, and I, I do want to bring this back to uh, our committee, is that we do good work when we put aside our partisan views and that, and, and the committee actually works uh, at arm's length from the, uh, from the minister. Uh, it, it has happened um, where we uh, managed to do some great work, which actually helped expose the, the, the clam scam uh, issue that then saw the minister at that time, the former fisheries minister, quietly shuffled in the middle of the summer um, and, uh, and then shuffled to another position. Mr. Speaker, why? Because they awarded a lucrative surf clam quota to a, a sitting Liberal Member of Parliament's uh, brother, um, as well as a former Liberal colleague, uh, but also uh, a relative, as we know now, uh, through uh, court documents, uh, uh, a relative of the then uh, fisheries minister. 
uh, Mr. Speaker, why do we have concerns? Why does this side of the House have concerns? And our job is, they, they always say that the opposition is being loud and voices, or our job is to be, I guess, the sober second thought to what these, uh, these folks are doing on the, on the other side. Yeah, it might be the Senate as we're hearing that, but, but somebody has to actually take a reasoned and measured approach and view of uh, legislation from what we've seen because of the tricks and, and, uh, and the parliamentary tricks that uh, this government has continued to do and pull the wool over Canadians' eyes. Thank you so much.